This video will look at COE security policies and capturing the groups for COE security policies in update sets. Um, so if you've landed on this video, you probably ran into a, an issue where you went from dev to test or even dev to prod and you had your COE security policies all configured up in, uh, in dev and when they landed in prod, the policies were there, but the groups associated with those policies were not there. So the short answer uh, is, and I'll, I'll give an explanation afterwards, but the short answer is the groups associated with COE security policies are considered data, I suppose, I'm just guessing, because they're not captured in update sets. Um, the only way to capture those, and we'll look at that in a, in a minute, is with the add to update set utility, or you can export them with XML and then import them into the production server. Um, so let's take a look at uh, COA security policies and update sets and how things work here. So I'm in uh, an instance here uh, and I have COA security policies. I'm going to make a new one and we'll call this uh, test. Test and I will save this. Okay. And now if we go to the update set, human resources core, Go to the update set and we can see at the top here COE security policy test uh, and this was me before so I should have named it something else but uh, so this is my update 1128 so we can see that got captured now if we go back to that and I stick a group in here so let's find maybe HR admin I fire that up and save it. And now we head over to our update set. Uh, nothing's there, right? Last thing that got in there was the COE security policy, which doesn't include the dependency. So let's go back and we take a look at this. So this record is in this table, M to M security policy group. Um, so the idea is we have to get this record into uh, an update set so that uh, we can move this to the other instance. So best way to do this, well, we can, we can move one record at a time. Uh, let's change our update set to global because these records, because they're considered data, they live in the global scope. And I'll change my update set. Oh, I thought I had one. Let's uh, do a new one. And we'll call this groups for COE security. Uh, I think I had a one, so we'll call it video. Okay, and we're back here. And so we can go into here and we can do an add to update set. And here it is. So it's in the groups for COE security video uh, global. Now, interestingly, um, so basically you just do this for all of the uh, groups. And obviously you don't have to go into those individually. Uh, you can just, let's grab the name of the table. You can do uh, this kind of thing. Go here, uh, that list. And I only have one of them, but uh, you can select them all and then do a add to update set that way. Um, if we go and look at our update sets, I think the add to update set utility creates some, um, uh, no, uh, did it do that? No, it didn't do that uh, in my case when I did it individually. Uh, sometimes it will create an, a, a batch, a batched update set with the p parent in, uh, I think the parent's in global, and then one child is in core and it's empty, and the other child is, let's do this, and the other child is in global, uh, and that has your actual record from the many-to-many -many table. Um, I think that has something to do with the way the add-to-update set works. It's trying to get the parent 
uh, COE security policy in there. Uh, but if that happens, you can just basically delete those uh, uh, or disassociate the child with the parent and then just bring the child over in global. So we have our update set here and it's gonna have all of our customer updates, uh, all of our uh, groups. And then we can just uh, complete this thing, move it over to prod and we'll have our groups uh, copied over there.